Now students, let us look at activity-based costing. <coughs> <coughs> activity-based costing, again, is a more recent concept of adoption of overheads. Absorption, allocation of overheads. What is activity-based costing? It is a method of cost accounting system to allocate indirect costs to cost objects. Indirect costs means, you remember, they are overheads, right? To cost objects. What are cost objects? The cost unit, number of units produced, the product or customer, whichever one I am talking about. Based on what? Based on what? What is the difference? There also I have been apportioning before when I did traditional method also we were up, we were absorbing overheads. Under absorption costing we absorb the overheads based on some departmental rate that we arrived at, right? Now here also we do allocate overheads, we absorb the overheads based on what? The extent to which cost object, the particular cost unit use activities which consume the resources. Resources are or what is paid for. We pay for our resources. How are the resources consumed? By what activities they are consumed? And how do the cost units, ultimate cost object, how much of the activities do they use? Therefore, this results in a more accurate allocation of the capacity cost <coughs> because it is activity based. Now, <coughs> Why do we need another method of allocating overheads? Why has it become so important? It's because today, today they are a huge component of the total costs. Today, with the advancement of technology, right? Now they are more. A lot of the charges are internet charges, processing charges, uh, outsourcing charges. They are uh, AC charges. They are all charges which may not involve law too much of uh, human interaction, human labor. Labor costs have reduced while overhead components have gone up. Okay. Now, when you have overheads, these overheads have to be apportioned among the various products that the company makes. So, if a company makes several products, overheads, proper allocation of overheads is required between, uh, between product 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. How do you apportion the uh, overheads? Now, overheads you may say is only an apportionment, but why do why are these overheads incurred for a certain purpose? All of these uh, these 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 products are consuming some resources. We are trying to make a better apportionment of these overheads. So why why is it important? An accurate understanding of the cost offers what a competitive advantage with respect to pricing and product mix. Now, when I make make a product A and product B, and I think product A has the higher percentage of cost, but actually it is product B, look at the decisions that I am making, they would all be wrong. I may price A and B differently. Yes or no, when I am aware of the cost, then it may be different. All the while, I thought B was very profitable. Now, with better allocation of cost, I might just realize that A is actually, product A is actually more profitable. So, as a result of understanding a better, understanding, uh, understanding the apportionment of cost better or understanding how, how the different products are consuming the resources differently, I, 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 I can take more informed decisions. I can take more informed decisions. Decision. So, what is activity-based costing? It is nothing but a system of costing. It is nothing but a system of costing which helps us to apportion overheads, allocate the overheads by seeing how much uh, the, the, the cost objects consume the activities, use the activities which actually consume the resources. Now look at this. This is how traditionally overhead absorption was being made. Departmentally, we used to go out. We used to find out what the overheads are. There is power, there is supervisor salary, depreciation, maintenance. So, department-wise, we would make a total of all the indirect costs. Right? Then we say, okay, if it's machine hours, normally machine hours or labor hours, depending on what is the nature, based on that, we, we divide, arrive at a deficit. Usual, uh, a rate. Normally, we take the estimated overheads, estimated machine hours for the next period. We arrive at a departmental machine hour rate and depending <clears throat> and, and apply this rate to the products. 
Yes or no? This is what was being done before. So traditional method, department, what are the resources, what are the expenses here and how they are consumed by the, uh, by the object to the machine. Say for example, a departmental machine over here. What is the difference in activity based costing? Now these resources are there to take an example students. Let us take, take the wages paid, the salary paid okay, to uh, a, an operator, to a machine operator. Suppose I take this salary. I am taking one item. That's a particular resource, right? I pay him so many dollars. Maybe some five thousand dollars are paid to him. This is a machine operator. Now, <clears throat> what are the activities which consume the resources? When I make an analysis of this machine operator, I realize that it's not only in running the machine. What are the things he does? He runs machine. Yes, he operates the machine. That's true. He also, he is also involved in the setup of the machine. Whenever the machine is set up, that's not the same as running the machine. It's a different activity. Maybe, maybe he also helps out in, let me say, the maintenance department. So once a week, he, his services are used by the maintenance department. It's just possible, right? So his salary of, if I take roughly $5,000, maybe $3,000 goes towards running of the machine. $1,000 is spent in setting up of the machine and another $1,000 in maintenance, in the maintenance department, in the activity of maintenance of the machines. <coughs> Do you understand? Are you following students? So now what has happened? One resource has been split activity wise. And now I look at other costs of running the machine. Maybe there is power. Maybe there is oil. All, all, uh, all costs of running the machine as against setup is a different activity. Maintaining the machine may be a different activity. So now we have split up, split up. <coughs> uh, we have found activities which consume the resources activities which consume the resources and then we see how the cost object uses these activities followed followed <coughs> it's a setup activity results in the in certain costs the running of the machine results in certain costs maintenance activity results in certain costs so we are split activity wise so there is a another in between uh, here that is an activity how the activities consume the resources and then how the objectives use the resources this is how it is allocated so you have an activity cost driver so so <clears throat> depending on the number of setups when i take this particular uh, particular overheads when i take actually i take it activity wise i find out for every setup what is the cost for every hour of running the machine, what is the cost? Maybe for every hour of maintenance, what is the cost? <clears throat> is it clear? So based on that, based on that, uh, I will, uh, based on how many machine hours, based on how many setups uh, the particular product takes, accordingly, I will be apportioning the overheads. So these are called activity cost drivers. Under the traditional method, there is a machine hour rate or a labor hour rate. That's the way of absorbing overheads. Here there are activity cost drivers. The activities which cause the cost, which drive the cost. Now, just to take a simple example, students, suppose I have a product A and product B. Raw material and direct labor are given 20 and 27, number of units 10,000 and 2,000. Now these two, if you notice, the number of units, this is a very high volume. Volume is high in, in case of A. And here the volume is low in case of B. Just as an example, I'm just telling you. Right? Now, wrong, the direct costs are always easy to identify. They are, <coughs> our problem is with overheads. So, now we know <coughs> this is the direct cost. Traditionally, what do we do? How do we absorb overheads? We take the budgeted overheads divided by the budgeted labor hours and arrive at a rate per hour. Maybe in this case, we have arrived at $10 per labor hour totally. <coughs> we expected budgeted overheads to be 250000 We expect labor hours to be 25000 and 10 per labor hour. Of course, I understand these are budgeted and there could be an under over absorption. That can happen even in activity-based costing. Now, <clears throat> what is my direct cost? 20 per unit into 10,000, 200,000, 27 into 2, dollars 54,000. So this is the total direct cost that I have. <clears throat> right? 
Now, my labor hours, let us say, were 20,000 in product A and 5,000 for product B. So, what is my uh, indirect cost? 20,000 into 10, <coughs> that is 200,000. And this is 5,000 hours into 10, this is 50,000. So, the total cost is direct 200 plus indirect 200, that is uh, 400,000, right? This and this together and similarly 54 and 50, 104,000 is the cost for product B. Clear? <clears throat> so, normally higher the volume of the product, higher is the, uh, is the indirect cost under, under the traditional method of uh, overhead absorption. Product A, product B, total cost per unit is $40 and $52. Sale price per unit, let us say, total cost is 40 and 40. This is correct, students. If you divide, I will get 10. Yes or no? 10,000. So, it's 40. And here, 104 by 2,000 would be 52. Let's say the sale price was 45 and 90. And therefore, the net margin is dollars five and dollars thirty eight. So I'm very happy with product B, where I'm making a profit of thirty eight per unit. But product A, I'm just about making dollars five per unit. But this is this is my understanding with my traditional method of overhead absorption, right? Now, let me continue with the same example, and let's say. For a simple example, students, I am just taking this into one activity. Say overheads of 250,000 consist of only mostly the setup activity. Maybe 90% of this cost consists of the setup activity. The setup time and resources for each product is the same. So if I have to make product A, maybe there is a setup time of 2 hours. For product B also, the setup time is 2 hours. Is it clear? <clears throat> and they used for in two hours the same amount of resources are used whoever sets up the machine so setting up what is setting up students before a production run a setup of machine certain certain kinds of processes require setting up of the machine cleaning assembling putting everything together and after the process is over again dismantling clearing etc so setup per se is a, is a is a huge activity and after setting up the machine you may be able to make only so many units or so many batches <coughs> batches <coughs> and again then there again you have to dismantle it's all a part of the setup cost okay now <coughs> let us say the setup time and resources for each product is the same so one setup let us say whether it is for product a or product b may cost maybe hundred dollars is it clear it's the same the only problem is the batch size may be different. That's a different case. So let's first do the budgeted overheads are 250,000 and we have budgeted the number of setups as 200. If it is 200, then it comes to dollars 1,250 per setup. When you take into consideration all the costs, the materials which go in, the people involved in the set setup, etc etc maybe i have arrived at a conclusion the company has arrived at a conclusion that it costs 1250 dollars per setup okay <clears throat> great so now again this is the same thing as before raw material cost number of units are 10000 and thing the total direct cost is 254000 now, the batch size is 100 units, whereas for product B is 20 units. You understand the batch size? After setting up, I can make one batch, maybe, maybe one batch. So, I have uh, 100 units only in that batch. So, to make 200, uh, to make 10,000 units, I need 100 batches. To make 2,000 units here, also I need 100 batches. Is it clear? So what has happened is between product A and product B, the difference is in the batch size. I take 2 hours or 10 hours or 5 hours to set up. I take 5 hours to set up A, 5 hours to set up the machine for product B. Both were the same. The only thing is after setting up, the what is the output from a batch? It may be it is 100 units for A, whereas for B, it is let's say 20 units. Are you getting the picture students? Now, if it is uh, 100, 
100 batches then then what is my cost 100 batches into 1250 it's 125000 again here also it's 100 batches it is 125000 yes or no now you realize students one small thing what is the difference here this 125000 will be spread over 10000 units for product a but for b it is spread over only 2000 units so there is a difference five times there would be a difference are you following now look at the cost also direct cost plus this is 325000 this is 179000 <clears throat> Take the per unit cost, divide by 10,000, you get 32.5, divide by 2,000, you're getting 89.5 is the cost. My sale price was as before 45 and 90, so I get a net margin here of 12.5, here it is only 0 0.5, it was something like 38 in my last when I did traditional method, now it is 0 0.50. Nothing has changed, nothing has changed, everything is the same. Only my method of computation has changed. Now I realize, I realize that though only 2000 units of B are being produced, only 2000 units of B are produced, they consume a lot equal amount of the resources. So B is actually a more expensive product. It costs more to make B. Followed, now I am more aware. <coughs> The traditional method, just to show comparison, traditional method, the cost I thought was 40, 40, <coughs> but under ABC, I realize it's not 40, it's only 32.5 as far as A is concerned. So I'm making a decent profit of 12.5, though previously I was under the impression that product A, the, the, the profit is very low per unit and maybe, maybe the company might just reconsider continuing with the production of product A. How foolish the decision would have been considering that they make more than double that amount of profit actually if they were not aware. Similarly, if I look at product B, it appeared to me that I was making 38 per unit. If the company studied the market and thought they could sell more units of B, they might go into the market and sell, try to sell more units of B. They might even bring down the price of B, thinking it will increase, improve their profitability, reduce the price in order to sell more units. Units thinking that their cost is only 52, whereas in reality, their cost is nearly around $90. In no way can they afford to reduce the price. In fact, to be profitable, they should increase the price of B. So look at the, look at what wrong decisions we could have been taking, the company could have been taking because of, uh, because of different methods of overhead absorption, because of the lack of care, right? Lack of understanding of how, how uh, resources are consumed by the different objects. So this is now, now it has gained importance because overheads have gained importance today. Are you following students <coughs> following so now the decisions regarding the pricing of the product this is very this is not uh, I might have to improve the price or regarding the product mix if I had thought I should make more units of B and less units of A now I have a different thought flow I have a different understanding of the costs of the different of the two products yes or no thus I take better informed more informed decisions